Alrighty, in this video we're going to put together our start screen as well as put together a strategy for allowing the player to go from one scene to another so we can chain as many levels as we want together in this game. What I want to have happen is when the player reaches a certain point in the level, I want him to his input to be disabled. Potentially we'll have him play an animation as well, but that'll be in a later video. And then I want to have the uh, level manager display how many points he has and then move him on either to the back to the start screen or to the next level. So in this way, we'll be able to chain as many levels as we want. So I'm going to start off by creating the start screen. However, because we're going to be creating multiple scenes that we'll want to navigate in between, we will have to start adding our scenes to our build settings. To do that, we go up here into File, and we go to Build Settings right here, and then we say Add Current, and that will add that scene into our build. And by adding that scene into the build, we are able to traverse from one scene to another scene. Alrighty, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and hit File, New Scene, and then I'm going to hit Control S and that will save the scene out and the location that I'm going to save it in is scenes and then start screen. So that way we now have a start screen scene. Say that 10 times fast. Now that we've done that, we've created a new scene, let's go back up to file, build settings, and add current before we forget. I will go ahead and reorder these however, so start screen is first. That's an arbitrary decision, just so our scenes and build looks a little nicer. In my opinion, start screen should be first, but it's going to have no impact whatsoever on our game. Because we will be referencing our levels by their names, not by their order. Okay, so what's our start screen going to be? Well, really, all it's going to be is it's going to be a camera positioned at 0, 0, 0. Then I'm going to go down here to Textures, and I'm going to click and drag Start out into the game. I'm going to set the start screen at 0, 0, 0. Then I'm going to click on the main camera, and um, let's go ahead and increase his orthographic size so that he, is, um, he can view most of the scene. That should be good. The last thing I want to do, um, as far as configuring our uh, positions of our sprites, is I want to come here to the background of our camera, and I want to change that to be the color that uh, we have right here in our um, start screen. So I'll click on background, and I'll select choose color, and I'll click on one of these colors at the back. Now when we switch over to the game view, we see a nice fill for the rest of our sprite, despite the fact that our sprite is only so big. So this should work decently well for every aspect ratio down to a square aspect ratio. So this should, this will display perfectly fine on pretty much any screen that you might want to put it into. Uh, if you have a square aspect ratio, then it'll work. And because there is no real aspect ratio where the width is smaller than the height, um, uh, that doesn't happen very often, uh, we will see that this will display perfectly reasonably fine for all of our purposes. The final thing we have to do on the start screen is actually write a script. The script's responsibility will simply to be to detect the player clicking, and when the player clicks, it'll load the first scene in the game, in this case, level 1. So I'm going to come back up here into Visual Studio, and I'm going to go into Code, and I'm going to create a new class. And the class is going to be called Start Screen. Now in Start Screen, I'm going to remove the namespace definition, and then I'm going to have it inherit from Mono Behavior. All the logic I need in the screen is simply to have a public string first level, which will be the name of the level to go to when the player clicks a button. Then I need to detect the player clicking a button, which I'm going to do via a public void update method. That update method is going to say if not input get mouse button down zero return otherwise application dot load level first level. So when the user presses the left mouse button, they will load the first level. Let's jump back into Unity and let's add that script to our camera. So I'm going to add a script called start screen 
and I'm going to say the first level is level 1. All right, so let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens when we click. Awesome. So when we click, we get sent to the first level. So now we can do that, we can click, and we see that we're on the first level. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and jump into our level one, and let's work on how we can go from a level one to a level two, all the way back to our start screen, and display the points to the player. The way I want to accomplish this is I want to create a volume in this level, a bounding volume, that when the user enters it, he'll be shot off either to level two, or level three or level four, or back to the start screen. So let's go ahead and write that code. I'm going to come up here to code, and I'm going to create a new mono behavior, and I'm going to call it, um, let's call it uh, finish level. Um, remove the namespace def definition, come up here, make it implement our inherit from mono behavior. And the finish level method will simply have a public void on trigger enter 2D that takes in a collider 2D other, and it'll say if other dot get component player equals null, then return. Otherwise, level manager dot instance dot go to next level level name. All right, so you'll see two bits of red here. First of all, we don't have a level name yet, and second of all, our go to next level method isn't implemented. So let's go ahead and on this class, I'll add a public string level name. Level name will either be the name of a level to go to, or null, or empty, if it's a considered to be the last level and we want the player to be returned to the start screen. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our level manager and add the go to next level method. The go to next level method will work very similarly at to our as our kill player method. So I'm going to go ahead and write public void go to next level string level name and it's going to say start coroutine go to next level level name. Or sorry, go to next level co level name. Now I have to implement the go to next level uh, co. It's not. It's co. It's not go. So we'll go, go ahead and say private i enumerator. Go to next level co string level name. All right. What do we want to do here? Well, I just want to go ahead and I want to show the player how many points he currently has after I apply the point bonus to him. And I also want to make sure that the player is immobilized, so that the player can't continue to move or doesn't respond to anything else uh, while this text is floating. And then after that, I want to either load the next level or go back to the start screen. So let's go ahead and implement that. I'm going to first say player.finishLevel. The finish level method isn't implemented on the player, but what it's going to do is it's going to immobilize the player. Then I want to say floating text, or I want to say game manager dot instance dot add points current time bonus. I want to add the current time bonus to our points. Then I want to say floating text dot show, and say string format blank points explanation point passing in game manager instance points as the parameter. The style. I just want to use the checkpoint text style. I'm just going to reuse that. So I'm going to say checkpoint text. Of course, we could write our own style if we wanted to. And then I'm going to instantiate a new centered text positioner that moves at 0.25. So it moves a little bit slower than usual. Then I want to say yield return new wait for seconds and then pass in, let's just wait for two seconds. Once we've done that, then we have to decide if we want to go to another level or if we want to go back to the start screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if string dot is null or empty level name application load level start screen. Otherwise application load level level name. 
All right, so this pretty much wraps up our level manager almost entirely, but we're missing one key point, and that's going to be when the level, the next level man manager is instantiated on the second level, what he, what's going to happen is his saved points parameter is going to be set to zero. He's not going to realize that there are already points that were set before the level started. This is a very easy fix. All we do is on the awake method, we simply say saved points equals game manager instance saved point, or sorry, points. Alrighty, so that's pretty much all we're going to have to do with the level manager. We're still missing one key thing, however, and that is how are we going to immobilize the player? Well, if we exit a full screen here and jump into our player script, we can scroll down and uh, let's find the uh, let's let's do this above kill and let's write a method public void finish level finish level is probably going to start an animation or we could have it start an animation or play a sound or something fun like that but what it ultimately has to do is it has to set enabled to false and it also has to set controller enabled false what does this do well, this it disables these two motto behaviors, meaning that our player will no longer respond to level or to input, and it'll no longer respond to any of the other forces in the game. We could also say something like uh, collider 2D dot enabled false as well. So we just want to disable as much as we can, but we don't want to disable the entire game object because that would make the game object disappear, and we don't want that. Alrighty, so I think that pretty much wraps up the code changes we have to do. Let's go ahead and test it. I'm first going to test it without a second level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this checkpoint one entirely, and then I'm going to scroll over here into the end of our level, come up here to game object, and I create an empty game object. Um, I'm, I am going to place this game object at zero on the z-axis. Now, to make this game object um, properly send the player to the next level, I have to first add a box collider 2D to it and set the is trigger to true. Then I want to go ahead and manipulate the size a little bit. I want to make this a little bit bigger than it is and maybe a little bit wider so that when the player finally gets to that little square right there, it's considered to be the end of the level. Next up, I want to add the finish level script. Now, in this case, I'll set the, le the level name to, zero, to null or to empty because I want this to loop back to the start of the game. All right, let's see what happens when we start the game from scratch. So let's load up our start screen and hit play, then click, and now you'll see we're in the game. And okay, so that probably went a little bit too fast, um, but what we can do is we can make it go a little bit slower by going back into our game and on our level manager, going to our go to next level co, um, add the wait to seconds, maybe five, and then make our centered text um, go a little bit slower. In addition, I, we could probably make this a little bit nicer as well if we add another floating text. So let's say floating text. Of course, at this point, we're just looking at how to design this particular thing. I mean, there's a variety of ways to um, um, to do this. And of course, this is something that you might want to tweak over time. But we will do a level complete with a checkpoint text, centered text positioner, set this at point uh, five, or how about point two F, and then we'll yield return new wait for seconds one, and then we'll show our other floating text and we'll yield return wait for seconds five, and then we'll lo do the actual app level loading. So let's see if that feels a little bit better. Jumping back into Unity, we can click to start the game. I think that feels a whole lot better. All right, 
So let's go ahead and put in a template for our second level. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to load up level one. I'm going to go to File, Save Scene As. I'm going to open up my Scenes folder, and I'm going to type in Level 2, and I'm going to hit Save. Then, now that we're in Level2.Unity, I'm going to go to File, Build Settings, Add Current, so now we have Level 1 and Level 2. Next up, I am going to modify my um, finished level a little bit. I'm going to move him like right there. I think that'll look a little bit better. And I will leave the finished level on level 2 pointing to an empty level name, because level 2 is the, f the final level in our particular game. And I'll rename this game object um, Game Finish Line. And let's go ahead and also add an um, icon to it. So I'm going to add a little icon to it. And then so that the icon appears a little bit closer to where I wanted it to uh, appear in, I'm going to cr crank the size down a little bit, and then I'm going to place it right there. All right, now that we have that done, let's go ahead and jump back into level one. And I'm going to come down here to the level end, which is this game object right here. I'm going to rename this to level finish line. I'm then going to mark it up so it's visible in the inspector. I think we used that color in the last one. I'm going to set the uh, box cutter a little bit smaller, bring it a little bit down, and then I'm going to give the level name, to, uh, I'm going to set that as level 2. All right, let's jump into our start screen and see if we can play the game all the way through. So first we're on level 1, and we're going to get through this. Level complete, 95 points. And now we're in level 2. And of course this looks just like level 1, but you can see at the top, or it still says start screen, but still. I could have sworn that Unity would tell you what level you're currently looking at somewhere. And that's it. At least your uh, your points are racking up, so you know you're there. Yep. And that's pretty much the whole um, game as far as going from level to level, and then starting at a start screen and ending up back at the start screen. The final thing that we have to do for our multiple levels is to make sure to reset our points at the end of a game. So to do that, let's go ahead and jump into Visual Studio, and let's open up our level manager. Or sorry, let's open up our start screen. Our start screen, when we start the game, needs to reset our points back to zero. We can simply do that by typing in game manager dot instance dot reset. By typing in reset, we have reset the game manager and have erased all the points that the player may have accumulated over a previous iteration of running through the level. Okay, so that pretty much finishes up all of our multiple levels and start screens. In the next video, we're going to take a look at starting our animations. So we'll see you guys then.